Hey everybody, it's me, Nathan, just by myself. I am uh, trying to watch Rambo and yeah, I'm going to watch it by myself. I know that there's going to be people. I mean, there's people on our channel that literally try and like yell at us because we don't know an obscure Beatles song, let alone the other Beatles songs. So I'm sure there's going to be somebody who's just like, you don't know Rambo. Well, of course I know Rambo, but I'm going to give you the context. Ryan and I grew up in different households. Okay. I grew up in a household where it was a little bit taboo to watch anything rated R. And I had to sneak out of the house in order to see it. Ryan had a little bit more leeway than I did. If he didn't, he would just go and get the videos and watch them anyways. And so anything I ever got to watch was because I went over to Ryan's house. In fact, Ryan and I went to Rambo 3 in theaters, even though I hadn't seen Rambo 1 or 2. I went to Rambo 3 in theaters. I've seen it. I can't remember very much of it. So I just had never got around to seeing this one, the first one. When Ryan figured out that I hadn't seen it, of course, his jaw dropped. His you know pants fell off. He got all excited. <laughs> I know Ryan is going to be watching this. He's a super fan. Let me just prove to you that he's a super fan. Here, check this out. Ryan does a number of channels, uh, not channels, but like uh, podcasts related to Sylvester Stallone. He's, it's dedicated to Sylvester Stallone. If you don't need any, if you're like, mm, I don't believe you. Well, let me prove it to you. These are some of the, here you can watch up here. Watch the little logo change. These are some of the uses of logos that he has for his other endeavors. He does a podcast called It's a Long Road, and I can't read what it says, the Rambo series podcast. One more round, the Rocky series, Last of the Action Heroes podcast, and the Sylvester Stallone podcast network is something he's a part of. So if you need more proof that he's uh, he's not a, a big enough fan, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not that big of a fan of Stallone. I like his stuff. I didn't get all worked up about it like Ryan has over the years. Um, that's not to say I, I hold that against him. So I know Ryan's watching this and he's waiting for me to say something bad about him. No, Ryan, you're a good guy. I You're like my best friend. And so part of why I'm doing this is because I know Ryan wants to see me react to it. And, you know, the two people who are watching it with me here, hey, they'll watch it too. Here's, oh, you want more proof that I've never seen it? Okay, so I went to go buy the DVD of First Blood, and this is how clueless I am. This is what I bought. For the Rambo fans that are like, how could you? I can't believe you would. Well, I don't know. I just thought it was Rambo. It, it said Rambo, so I bought Rambo at the, well, it was at a, a used DVD place. And of course, this is like, I don't know, Rambo 7 or 8. I don't, I don't even know. This is actually funny enough. I've actually seen this one. I was teaching school. Anyway, that's a story for another day. I definitely haven't seen the first one. Otherwise, I would have picked the first one. All right. Now I'm going to get into the part that I'm pretty sure is important. We never really do a lot of research on this channel, but I just got this hunch that I needed to look at this research a little bit just to have a basic idea of what was going on. I'm glad I did. So I've learned after looking at Wikipedia, this is a film directed by Ted Kotcheff, and he's an actually American-Canadian film director. Also co-written by Sylvester Stallone. Okay. It stars, I don't know who Richard Crenna is, but it also has Brian Dennehy. And I know him from Romeo and Juliet. I believe he plays Montague in that. That's <laughs> shows you my side of understanding things. It's based on the novel First Blood by David Morrell. And this is interesting. Many directors and studios had unsuccessfully attempted to adapt it to film in the 1970s. I'm curious, what do those films look like? They must be awful. Um, I'm sure Ryan knows all about this. And then the rest of it kind of gives a little bit of this. I didn't read the, the summary of the film. It did fairly well at the box office. It doesn't have great ratings, which is kind of odd to me. Like, it's got okay ratings. When you look up First Blood, I think it's like 7, 8-ish, kind of out of 10 for most of the ratings. I I'm interested to watch this. I, I know very little about this other than, and I tried to give Ryan a synopsis of what I know about the film. And he was like, you definitely need to watch the film. I know that Rambo played by Sylvester Sloan is he's like a Vietnam vet and he's a troublemaker. I know that it's supposed to take place in hope, which is funny because I think it's filmed in hope, sorry, hope Washington, 
Somebody already is typing their comments. Hope Washington, gotcha. Hope Washington, and it uh, takes place of, uh, it actually was filmed in Hope, Vancouver, which is a place I am familiar with. I think that's that's enough context. People are already skipping to where the part where I just sit there and watch it. So let's get to that part right now. Let's watch Rambo First Blood. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. Here we go. Okay, before it starts, is this after Rocky or before Rocky? I'm pretty sure it's after Rocky. I believe Rocky was Sylvester Stallone's big start. And I have seen Rocky for sure, the first one. It's been a while, but I've seen it. I want to know contextually, did this come before or after Rocky? Uh, back in the days where they gave you all the actors' names in the beginning scenes. <laughs> I haven't seen a movie at all lately that does this with the credits in the beginning. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I know it was kind of the rage back in the day. Oh, cow, he's young. <laughs> so the DOP is Andrew Laszlo. He has been on a number of projects. I've seen his name come up before. Jerry Goldsmith, he's a famous soundtrack guy. Screenplay done by Stallone. Didn't know that. Okay, Rocky was 1976. I didn't realize that. Can you tell me this is where Delmar Barry lives? He ain't here. Go on inside. Please. You can see that's Delmar's writing. I'm sure, I had a hard time finding it. Yeah, that's his writing. Uh, my name is John Rambo. We served on the same team together in Nam. And there's Delmar right in the back. You had to put him in the back because he's so big. If he didn't, he'd, he'd take up the whole picture. Look how big he is. Delmar's <laughs> gone. He died. Died last summer. Died how? Cancer. Brought it back from Nam. All that orange stuff hmm. that spread it around. Oh, Agent Orange. Down to nothing. Very sorry. Hmm. Those old cars. Welcome to Hope. Hope, BC. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Did this movie set brian dennehy off on the track of being the bad guy because it feels like he's the bad guy in a lot of other movies he just has that bad guy look and feel all the time i'm curious did he ever play any roles as the good guy because i'm pretty sure he's going to be the bad guy in this i'm just guessing morning amy uh, how you doing girls great thanks you all right this morning <laughs> andy howdy will <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe those were cop cars back in the day. Morning. You uh, you visiting somebody around here? You're asking for trouble around here, friend. Uh, jump in. Hmm. So he's bummed out about his friend dying. Is there any law against me getting something here? Yeah, me. What? Why are you pushing me? First of all, you don't ask the questions around here. I do. You understand? Secondly, <laughs> we don't want guys like you in this town. What? Well, it's a different time, hey? I, I don't know what it, the situation is like uh, today in the States. And maybe what they're playing off of here is this is like Washington State. Maybe Washington didn't really like or treat their vets very well. But from what I understand, vets are, by the public anyway, treated with a lot of respect. I don't know that for sure because I don't live in the United States. I know in Canada, we tend to treat our vets fairly well we give them special license plates i know that not every person has the same experience but people i've met people who are vets who've served time they tend to get uh, a lot of respect i served in the military for five years when i bring that up to people it's not like people go oh gee one of those they're usually very like oh wow you serve in the military they want to know more questions and stuff so i don't know what the what the difference is here but a different time obviously this is playing off of post vietnam people coming back from vietnam were not in great head spaces i'm guessing a lot of people had to like pick up all that pieces of all the vets coming back and, and that was problematic so it's a different time i get it first thing you know we got a whole bunch of guys like you in this town that's yeah why. okay that's what i thought it's a quiet little town it's beautiful of course you'd like it there in fact you might say it's boring and i get paid to keep it that way <laughs> If you want some friendly advice, get a haircut and take a bath. You wouldn't get hassled so much. Hope this ride helped you out. Yeah. You have a nice day, huh? Thanks, Mr. Policeman. So friendly. Drive you out of town and leave you out here. He's like, <laughs> probably like a longer walk. Oh, yeah. He's going to go back to town. I love it. <laughs> uh. Talking to you, goddamn. 
It's not like he has to, it's like by law or something. All right, you're under arrest. For what? You hear me? Now put your hands on the car. How you do it, you decide right now. Seriously, what is he under arrest for? Your legs back. I just can't figure out it's why people nice don't trust the police in the United States. Wow, what do we have here? Huh? Oh yeah, the Rambo knife. I never watched Rambo, but I had a Rambo knife. I had something similar to this anyway. Oh, there's some like awful pictures of me as a younger boy, probably like eight or nine. I knew the romanticized version of Rambo. And so I definitely got all dressed up in camouflage with my Rambo knife and my like headband, you know, I'm like nine or 10 years old. I had no idea who Rambo was or what it was about, but I definitely played into it. I had this sweet knife. It had like all these little pieces in it, like fishing line and a little saw and just dumb things that you'd never use. A fishing line you could use in the saw, but it had other weird things. Like, really? What are you bringing him in for? All right, buzz us in, will you? I want you to book this gentleman for vagrancy, resisting arrest, carrying a concealed weapon. How resisting arrest? <laughs> Sharp knife. Escort this young man downstairs, with you? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Gall. You know, so it dumb. Like it's going to take old Leroy about 10 years to paint this hall. Your name? Your name! Oh. Uh, Name. Oh, wait a second. Hey, you got three seconds before I break your face in. He just attacked him. <laughs> he pulls it and breaks the chain. Classy. What do you know about the old Harry here is a soldier? Rambo. John Jay? I promise you're going to talk to me, soldier. It won't work that way. It'll only smear and I'll run across. <laughs> Look, you son of a bitch. If you don't put your goddamn hand down there, I'm going to break it off. What the hell is going on down here? Now, we're going to make you a little bit more presentable for your courtroom appearance. Now, between now and then, you can just impress the hell out of me by doing exactly as you're told. I'm guessing one of the reasons why this film would have done so well is because what John Rambo's going through here it would be very similar to what a lot of vets experience. They're trying to process what's what happened to them. The system doesn't really seem to work on their side anymore. It seems to be almost work against them. The mistrust of the government, the way that the Vietnam War was handled, plus being incarcerated themselves, if some of them got caught, processing all of that, and then coming back home and feeling kind of like, you know, being forced to do things in their own country. I'm guessing this rang a lot of bells for people who experienced things like this. Yeah, and if you've ever been around cops that seem to like throw their weight around like this, it doesn't help at all. I'm sure a lot of people identified with the feeling of John Rambo. Like, you you can't help but feel like you're on his side here. These cops are way over the top. Clean him up. They're going to be shit. like... Look at this. <laughs> what the hell's he been into? Who gives a shit? <laughs> what? Galt! What the fuck is that? Yeah. Well, the man said clean him up. Clean him up. Holy cow. Well, this is this is the nudity scene, I bet. <laughs> hey, Preston! As if this wouldn't be triggering. Oh man, yeah, I was gonna say. That boy is hard to get hold of. Yeah, because he's ripped. He's a fat cop. Let's go shave you, partner. Guessing he saw. Yeah. I don't want you to guess your own throat. Oh yeah. I'm not going to let it go. Nice. It's just wanted to beat the crap out of these guys. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I love this logo. <laughs> we'll move over the desk. The sound effects are awesome. I know it's. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Low angle for effect to show that it didn't go that high. <laughs> That'll slow him down. Wow, the sound effects are so old. Of his car flying off. 
Yeah, follow me in here. Oh, <laughs> they hit the horn. <laughs> oh, he's screwed. There's no way he's getting out of there. Yeah. We even checked to see if he's okay. He looked to make sure he's still alive. I know you can hear me! You're finished! You've got as far as you're gonna go! Something tells me Rambo's a little better at surviving than uh, Chubby Cop there. Make myself shelter. He just threw in string. What do you do with the string? Or a coat. Oh, okay, yeah, like a coat. Something to... Tell Ball to get out to the lumber camp. Tell him to get the helicopter up here. If they give him any shit, tell him to cite him for obstruction right on the spot. The we'll get him. No problem. <laughs> It's so funny because this all started from the cop's attitude right from the beginning. This is where I know things haven't really changed a whole lot. I've seen a few videos of this where cop introduces himself in a very like, I'm in charge here kind of way to whoever they're arresting or whoever they're talking to. And right from the beginning, you can tell it's the antagonistic attitude that they keep doubling down on that just keeps spiraling out of control. Like, it's so crazy to me that somebody who didn't have any intention of going this far just didn't say anything when he was yelled at. And then as soon as they go, hey, I'm talking to you, mister, they decided they made it the bigger deal. The cops made it the bigger deal. And none of that was, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like, would this actually happen today? Maybe. I've seen enough cop videos, you know, live cop videos where they keep pushing things out of control and it's, you didn't have to make it this big of a deal. It, clearly in the 1980s, it was there. They're making the same argument here that this cop didn't need to push it this far, but he couldn't let it go. Nice waterfall. I bet you can go and see that today. I bet you there's a way to see that waterfall. Today. Thank you, Let's go get him, Yeah, we'll be Did we go deer hunting up here last year? Yeah, I got a couple bucks last year. Yeah, I'll shoot anything. Hey, Mitch, up the hill. <laughs> Ooh, the compass in the handle. I remember I had that in my on my knife, too. Hey, keep moving, because my dogs can eat and run at the same time. <laughs> Straight to the top. <laughs> All these fat, lazy cops out of breath. That's hard work moving uphill like that. There were three of us on him in the cell block down there. He went through us like we weren't even there. He's the only smart cop, that the red-haired cop. He's the only one that seems to, like, get it. Everyone else is like, we got this. We could do this. Ooh. Okay, so what this is making me do, and I knew Ryan was waiting for me to say something like this. What this is making me want to do is go and explore all these exact locations. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody has, I guarantee somebody has, has gone to find all of the locations where all of this was filmed, that cliff, that waterfall, all these places. Cause this is all in, that's not my backyard. Like I'd have to drive a long way to go, but I'd love to do like a tour of all the sites of this. This is this is where I grew up. I grew up on uh, Vancouver Island. One of the places I call home just because it's so beautiful. Everything about it is beautiful. It's very harsh and very, you know, there's a lot of challenging terrain and that sort of thing. But I, I just love it. And the idea of going and finding all these spots and seeing them would be kind of cool. Oh, is he going to make him jump into that little creek? No. No way. That water's not deep enough. I'm trying to climb down, maybe. Yeah, I'm down. Ooh, yeah, that's... Oh, helicopter. I love how they're spending all this money to capture this guy that refused to be fingerprinted. Oh, jeepers. Yeah. Oh, hit cool. Fun fact, fun fact. Ryan's going to love this. I'm a big geology guy, so Ryan will love this fact. So all this rock here, I live in a part of Canada that is in the prairies. The mountains of the prairies are made out of uh, what are called sedimentary rocks. So it's all like limestone and stuff like that. This is a uh, granite and you only see granite on the coast because yeah, it didn't, it's not layers and layers of sediment that it formed. It's igneous rock that was formed. It's, it's fun rock to climb. It's like the best rock climbing rock. It's not really a fun fact. It's probably a dumb fact, but anyway. Just not that deep. He falls into that water. 
what are they going to take shots at him? That helicopter is going to crash. There's no way it's going into that gorge. Did you seriously say they're going to shoot at him? <laughs> First, what the hell's going on? We're just supposed to spot it. Exactly. There, so many rules have been broken in, in this. Thing, right? I swear to God. Holy cow, this guy should be in jail. What? Okay, that slows him down. Oh, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt. Oh, crap. Wow. That helicopter pilot. How is it not getting the side? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Ah! 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 Wait, where's his rifle? He did. And things go best. Well, oh, now he's got a rifle and a coat. Helicopter coming. It's his own fault. No, no, shh. Now they're going to label him a cop killer. <laughs> okay. At some point, you have to ask the question, is this worth it? Like, seriously, are you chasing, like, a drug lord or a terrorist or, you know, a mass murderer or something? No, seriously, it's just some guy. It's so crazy that they've already expended all these resources, sunk all this time and energy into this. For what? It's just so they can be like, yep, we're the cops. We did it. We're great. Oh, that's bothersome for me. Okay, yeah. What has he got? Like pain meds or something? Or matches? Yeah, maybe matches. Oh, okay. Like a sewing kit. Good visual effects there with the like, somebody's pumping blood to make that come out. That's kind of cool. Old school visual effects. It's good. Better. <laughs> One man dead! It's not my fault! I don't want any more hurt! But I didn't do anything! Seriously? Oh my Lord, God damn it, cease fire! Okay, that broke all kinds of protocol and rules right there. Like he had his hands up, he had no weapon on him. And they ugh. Oh, this irritates me so much. Okay, I'm sure I'm supposed to feel irritated. Yeah. Sheriff the base, come in. <laughs> I don't give a goddamn what's on its way. I want that chopper back here right now. <laughs> I don't want Galt's body out here all night. John Rambo is a Vietnam vet. He told Green you that Marine, already. Congressional oh, Medal of Honor. Guy's a war hero. I knew there was something about that guy. I double checked <laughs> it, Will. I want you to do what I told you to do, goddammit. Get that chopper oh. back here now. Out. It's got to be on the winning side. Green Beret, war hero. That's great. <laughs> See, he's the only one who's the with you actually one talking man. reasonable Move. sense. Why don't you let the state police handle this? Look, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> oh, oh, this boy. is helping me. I'm... He and I were friends when your Whoa. mama was still wiping your nose. Now he's dead. He's dead because of that psycho out there. Now you listen, boy, and you listen to me good. I'm going to get that son of a bitch. And I'm, I'm going to get that son of a honor bitch. honor to his liver. <laughs> and I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to get that son of a bitch. The redhead guy's like, oh, okay, I see your, your totally reasonable point here now. Come on, Come on. Hey, 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 knock it off. Mitch, Mitch, the fight is out there! He's out there waiting! Don't tell me Mitch is going to make it out of this alive. Get him, Oh! Did he shoot the guy? He had automatic rifles? Now, I didn't know this. Maybe this happened in the 80s. Was it normal for local cops to have machine guns? I didn't realize that. I always thought that there was a ban on that, but maybe they do have machine guns. I just don't know this. I'm ignorant. I'm a Canadian. Our cops definitely don't use machine guns unless they're in you know, some kind of a big organized 
assault or something like that. But I didn't know that the average cop could own or have a machine gun, much less those look like not M1s, but the equivalent. Uh, oh, he's hit. It's not him. It's a goddamn scarecrow. <laughs> scarecrow that shot Orville. He's close. He's real close. Go get him, Maggie. Dog's going to get shot. I mean, it's sad the dog has to die there or whatever, get taken out. You cover it. Damn it, get your belt on there fast. Where's the first aid kit? I left it in the car. <laughs> These cops get are amazing. Gun. Give me our Galt's gun. Get the son of a bitch. Go. Go get him. <laughs> That's hilarious logic right there. He had no right to shoot my babies. You set them on him. They would have torn him apart. What else would you expect? A person defending their life isn't going to just let dogs attack them and bite them. And keep moving. There's no way out of here except through us. <laughs> yes, let's double down. I think we got him. Not, we ain't hunting him. He's hunting us. <laughs> I love that line. We ain't hunting him. He's hunting us. If any of you have see, seen the movie Predator, which is one of my all-time favorite movies, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some inspiration from this that was applied into the predator movie because that's that's the feeling here at least like we're all so good at our jobs and we're being hunted by somebody who's way better than us it's kind of cool right off, damn it. <laughs> well it's the west coast it should be pouring rain by now that's not it M16, that looks like G3A3. Sorry, I do know a few guns. I don't know every gun, but it looks like different make. Well, I'm not the red-haired guy. He seems to live. Okay, that was totally intentional. I love it. I love it. So he didn't kill him. He just got him good, got him to scream. They all get sucked into the scream. Let me see what he does with this. He's above him. Nice. Got bored. I spread out. I'll go this way. <laughs> no, we got this. I missed that. Did he actually hit him? It looks like he. Oh. Oh, like a trap. That is a G3, I think. Oh, variant. Oh. <laughs> you just keep getting taken out. <laughs> he's not killing them he's just making the point that they're not gonna yeah give up Whoa. yeah tell you oh i like that line i'm telling you the law out here it's me Let it go. change your pants yeah. that's right try like the little boy you are Here's that helicopter they ordered. <laughs> so really, the only one that died is the idiot that had to hang outside of the helicopter. Reporters are drinking the place dry. Damn reporter, tell him the truth. What still remains unexplained by local authorities is just how and where the former Green Beret came into possession of the weapons with which he allegedly killed one deputy sheriff and tried oh, to kill six others. I love Only it. Their skill training and police enforcement techniques saved their lives. Okay. And Forget now, what I said about telling the truth. In custody. What is it, Lester? What is it? For Christ's sake, spit it out. Oh, well, I was, uh, I was just talking to Mitch, and he was saying that Galt and a couple of deputies were uh, a little hard on the guy. Assholes. One goddamn bit of difference, Dave, and you know it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gets out of line with a prisoner. Then the prisoner comes to me with it. And if I right. find out it's like he says, I kick the deputy's ass. Me. The yeah, law. Sure That's the do. way it's got to be. People start fucking around with the law and all hell breaks loose. Uh, Yeah, he you should probably God use that advice. Man like Rambo. God didn't make Rambo. I made him. <laughs> Sam Trotman. Look, we're a little oh. busy this morning, Colonel. What can I do for you? Rambo's a civilian now. He's my problem. I don't think you understand. No. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. <laughs> The fact that the cop here still doesn't get it. He had a knife to his throat, watched all of his guys basically get strung up in trees, and he didn't kill him. He could have done it. And he still feels like, no, I got this. 
I think I can handle this. That's telling of this guy, the character, obviously not the actor. The actor's fantastic, but the character that he's playing, it's so dramatic irony, right? We can see it coming. This dude, he's either going to die or he's going to go to jail or he's going to get his comeuppance. It's coming to him. You don't seem to want to accept the fact that you're dealing with an expert in guerrilla warfare. With a man who's the best. With guns, with knives, with his bare hands. In Vietnam, his job was to dispose of enemy personnel. To kill, period. Win by attrition. Well, Rambo was the best. I don't think I've ever seen Wild Pig anywhere in uh, the West Coast. But, hey, he's Rambo and maybe that pig... Just wanted to give himself up just a chance to see Rambo. What, what do you and the special forces think I ought to do about your psycho out there? <laughs> Let him go. I do my own work. I don't figure the best way to do that is to close my eyes and then hope he gets picked up in Seattle. Well, if <laughs> you send your people in there after him, they'll get killed. You know, we're just a small hick town sheriff's department, Colonel, but we're expected yeah. to do our duty just like our heroes in the special forces. Are you telling me that 200 men against your boy is a no-win situation for us? You send that money, don't forget one thing. What? A good supply of body bags. I don't know which side you're on, Trout. <laughs> I still think you came out here just to cover your ass. I love that this cop, he's got it all figured out. He's pretty sure he's two steps ahead of Rambo. Oh, he took their radio, so he's got, he knows what they're doing before they're doing it. Just respond. We can work everything out. Over. Anything? Right. Maybe you can talk him into sparing all our lives by giving himself up. At least we'll get a radio fix on his position, if you don't mind setting him up for it. Setting him up for you? That's like bringing the pigeons to the cat. <laughs> Cover leader calling Raven. That's his call sign is Raven? Copy leader, to identify Baker team, Rambo, Mesner, Ortega, Coletta, Jorgensen, Danforth, Barry, Krakauer, Firm. Hmm, do we ever get to see these people? Baker team, they're all dead, sir. Not Delmore, Barry. Barry's gone too, sir. Got himself killed in now. Didn't even know it. I'm the last one, sir. Well, look, John, we can't have you running around out there wasting friendly civilians. There wouldn't be no trouble except for that king shit cup. Yeah. Well, you did some pushing of your own, John. Mm. They drew first blood, not me. Oh, okay. I never pieced that part together, that it was who drew first blood. It makes sense. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, who's the person to start the whole thing? It's definitely the cops that punched first. They started it. Oh, okay. Did not piece that together until this moment. I like it. He ah, repeats it. No, he's going to abandon Coming that. Coming here to Raven. Gonna, Rebel, acknowledge. Gonna fix on his position. I'm first line. I'm going to put every man I got up on that ridge. Yeah. That will get him my way. Gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your, your way is real good. It worked the first time really well, too. Damn. Colonel's like, they're all going to die. Oh, wow. They're really like... <laughs> the system's over the top. A strange shot. Oh, because he's hiding. Okay, I was like, that's just a bad cut. Nope. Oh. <laughs> that was dumb. Just throw the gun like a couple of yards away. <laughs> it's got to be said. What are these people doing with hundreds of military all around? Let's go hunting. That's a good idea. We'll shoot anything that moves. Except for all the like hundreds of military human beings walking around. That seems a little unrealistic. <laughs> I don't want him dead. I want him alive. <laughs> it's a nice cut. <laughs> oh, he hit them? Come on! Oh, they're terrified. Oh, you yeah. guys are great. I You're thought he shot them. Screw that, Clinton. I ain't going up there. Oh, <laughs> this is classic National Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the rocket launcher? Rocket launcher? Rambo, to come out! <laughs> Who's that guy, Weird Al? Killer. Besides, I'm in charge, and I say we blow it up. So let me get out of the way first. <laughs> I've fired those before. Yeah! Leave that man a cigar! Bullseye! 
<laughs> he totally looks like Verdell. <laughs> yeah, I've fired those before. They don't make they don't make a fire gas explosion like that. They make a pretty controlled explosion. Move in a little closer, just like you and Jima. I love that this cop can't take this jacket off. Damn it! What the hell do you think this is? Some kind of a circus? Get the hell out of here! <laughs> well, he was shooting at us, Will. Come on, I wasn't taking any chances. They were shooting first. I love how it's always like, oh yeah, we. To dig his body out of there we right had away. to shoot him because he was shooting at us. Will, come on! I gotta be back at the drugstore tomorrow. And you better get started right away, Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Weekend warriors making a torch. This is his knife. The knife the torch. Bunch of goddamn weekend warriors. Uh, <laughs> Thought you said he was the best you ever trained. Survivor of countless incursions behind enemy lines. Killed for vagrancy in Jerkwater, USA. <laughs> now, don't give me any of that crap, Trotman. <laughs> you think exactly. Rambo was the only guy who had a tough time in Vietnam? He killed a police officer, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Goddamn lucky he didn't kill all of you. Yeah, he killed a police officer. And we didn't let him go loose. The best man lost. And he doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, he's going back into Rambo mode. Tank top Rambo mode. Careful, Rambo. What are you doing? What's going on? It's the same arm you hurt before. Oh, I re injured himself. <laughs> I'm going to find like an exit. The water's got to go somewhere. Nowhere to go, but. Hmm. This gives me like. Claustrophobic. Oh, of course, there's rats down there. And it's an old fear that rats like will, like jump on you and attack you. <laughs> I wanted to kill that kid. Well, I wanted to kill him so bad I could taste it. Doesn't sit well with that badge. It can get confusing sometimes. In Vietnam, you can bet that Rambo and I got pretty confused. We had orders. When in doubt, kill. <laughs> I mean, what would you have done with him if he came in? Would you wrap your arms around him, give him a big sloppy kiss? Or would you have blown his brains out? I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's either give him a big, huge kiss or blow his brains out. That's the classic either or argument slash straw man argument. You make up this ridiculous version of what it is to justify what you would do. It's like, yeah, there's no other options in there. Not even like, mm, I don't know. Talk it through, figure out why he's here, find out how to address some of those issues. Nope, it's either blow his brains out or give him a big, wet, sloppy kiss. I couldn't answer that until I met him face to face. It's just as well we never got a chance to find out. Yeah, he's definitely following where the wind is going and he's going to find a way out. Oh, yeah, there it is. There you go. Does he have his weapon with him, though? Did he drop it? He sling it in his back. Maybe he slung it in his back. I got his knife for sure. Oh no, so he doesn't. That's odd that he left. Maybe it ran out of ammunition. <laughs> Don't look at me, look at the road. That's how accidents happen. <laughs> All right, what do you got in the back, Robert? Eh? M60. Oh, yeah. Go on, move. He's not killing you, he's just throwing you out. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I turn that up. <laughs> Looks like somebody pulled the plug too soon. That Rambo guy. He's on the loose again. Shit. <laughs> this is Trapper. It's Rambo. He's still around. That's so surprising. <laughs> Got the bigger vehicle by like three times. Wait, are those cops dead? No, they just exploded a car because explosions. All right, we're stopping you. We're not, you're not getting through us here. Oh, wow. Gutsy move. Be on the lookout for a giant army truck driving through town. That's <laughs> 
Time to change vehicles. Now that's a gun. Boo. I guess they have to believe that maybe he's dead again. Fuck! Now get out there right away. Like he hit the gas station and intentionally lit it on fire to make it kind of look. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Whoa! Watch yourself! We're all gonna blow! We're all gonna blow! Those looked like they were detonated instead of just catching on fire. All right, I'll just go out by myself with uh, my little. One pistol. We found Rambo's body. Oh, okay. No. Nope. As a matter of fact, rifle. it stole an army truck, blew up a gas station the other side of town. You trained. You taught him how to get out of places like that cave. But he's not going to get out of this place. Teasel, <laughs> you and all your men couldn't handle him before. Now, what makes you think you can handle him now? Because he's in my town. Prepared to do. That's a high-caliber machine gun. Not an easy one to hold. Everybody dies. <laughs> He's the worst logic of anyone I've ever heard. Not Troutman. Jesus Christ, where do you people come from? This is my job, Troutman. This is my town. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not giving it up to you. No, no or to anybody, anybody else. else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty, uh, it's cliche, but it's still like, obviously this is one of the first movies to do this right. I'm gonna go catch him on the roof. Yeah, that's it. They'll never see me coming. Yeah, I'll catch him going into the cop shop and then I'll blast him. Won't see me coming. It's funny because at no point in this entire movie have I ever been on the cop side. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty high caliber machine gun. That's like firing rifle rounds. Uh, I think it's 762 is the caliber of the rounds. I've only ever fired it laying down with a tripod and a big magazine. Oh. Camping fuel. Going shopping. Oh, is he going to like take out a source of ammunition, I guess? Try and lead people in there and then blow it up? Yeah, I'm not sure what he's doing. I wonder if Mythbusters has ever proven that that won't send bullets flying in every direction. Maybe it does. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, you left lights on that one. Okay, I see. Oh, it's the distraction. There. <laughs> Still think you got this, buddy? Mm, this makes me want to see like Rambo versus aliens. That'd be a cool matchup. Or Rambo versus Predator. Good way to set the suspense. I like it. So we saw him on the roof, so he's got to know that he's up there. Oh, smart. You deserve it. He told you. He told you. Hey, you crazy son of a bitch. Finish. Rambo! Rambo, don't do it. Drop your weapon. We're going to order the chopper in and fly you back to Bragg. What's he going to do? This mission is over, Rambo. Do you understand me? This mission is over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. It's all in the past now. For you. Yeah. Back there, I can fly a gunship. I can drive a tank. I was in charge of million dollar equipment. Back here, I can't even hold the job. Fucking guard. Mm. Oh, God. Where is everybody? Oh, man. Remember Dan Forrest? When this bar in Saigon, and this kid comes up, and he says, uh, shine, please. And the, the box is wired, and he opened up the box, fucking blew his body all over the place. And there's pieces of him all over me, just like, like this. And it's, it's my friend, it's all over me. He's got blood and everything, and I'm trying to hold him together. No one else is saying, oh, I want to go home. I want to drive my Chevy. I said, well, what? I can't find your fucking legs. I can't get out of my head. Wow. This is the best part of the movie. 
<laughs> wow, that actually got me emotional. I don't know why that, that was the best the best acted scene in this entire movie. I guarantee people have looked at that and again, oh, look at it, Timmy's doing it. It's easy to look past that because he's really tapping into what soldiers went through. That just felt like all that he was saying there, he was there's some real part of what he's saying. I wonder how he acted that. I wonder what he went through. I'm sure Ryan knows the whole story, but the fact that he's going through and, and really giving a, an accurate portrayal of what a soldier deals with and has to deal with, they file all that stuff in the back. They never want to talk about it. And then you get pushed to the very edge. There's nothing left. And it all just comes out. That was the best part of the movie, in my opinion. Everything else, yeah, the action and everything like that. But that right there, best part of the movie, hands down. Loved it. He's going to bring him out. Oh, they cuffed him front ways instead of behind in the back. Interesting. So do they leave Buddy alive? Oh, yeah. He's still alive. He's got bullet holes in him, but he's still alive. Oh. And it hurts. Wow. I'm amazed. I got to listen to the music. Cool. All right. Well, someone's going to be offended that I did this, but I'm going to, I get it. Unless there's, I'm going to maybe scroll ahead and just final thoughts on the movie here. That's the name of Ryan's podcast. It's a long road. So I, I wonder if Ryan, if he's like really loves that song or he just kind of like, he likes that it kind of ends like that. So here's what my final thoughts are. That's really bold of the filmmakers to end with the climax. And I know that like, yes, the climax is the height of the most action, but I would argue that it's, it's not the height of the most action. It's really when things hit the peak of where things is where you really start to feel the heart of the movie. And, and to me, that was the heart right at the end. It's, it's great. at setting up part two. It, I mean, honestly, like I, I have no idea what happens in part two. I assume what's as nuts there. The sheriff is going to be part of it because he's still alive and he's got to get his revenge because he's so hell bent on getting him back somehow and making the world a better place by killing this guy that means nothing i wonder if we ever get a, a a little glimpse into why that sheriff is just such a dick like why why does he have to do this he's got something else that in his psyche that's just driving him that he's got to take him out i wonder if we ever get a little like insight into why he's like that because there's something up there it's not just a oh i just don't like drifters that much or you know, maybe he's got a bad experience with one that kind of explains it because he just seems he seems off. He seems really off that he's so bent on taking him down. You heard it here, folks. I will be watching part two. Definitely. I didn't think I was when I watched this. I was kind of like, Meh, I'll just give this a shot. I will be watching part two in a upcoming month. Um, I have another movie series that I've I'm currently on. I'm <laughs> doing twilight this was my palate cleanser from twilight this was my like attempt to really you know get into a good guys movie oh i'm doing part two of this because i enjoyed this a lot more than i thought i really enjoyed the scenery that's like my, my favorite scenery I, I i bet you part two probably doesn't take place in the same place i don't know i don't know that for sure so don't quote me on any of that stuff oh good movie oh it made me feel good i I, I love that I got into the emotional side. I did not see that coming. A lot of the clunky dialogue before, I didn't believe I'd actually feel anything. And then getting into that that final scene there where talks about his past and gets that all out. It was just kind of like, oh, anyone that watched this, I'm sure went like, wow. Anyone who said before that he couldn't act, you're wrong. Uh, Stallone can act. He's got a great ear for emoting what a soldier would feel, what a person who went through that would feel. Yeah, it was a great surprise. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed that. I Thank you for joining me here. Um, yeah, if you want to check out part two, join our Patreon, and uh, you'll be able to join me live while we do this. I think Ryan's going to enjoy my reaction here, and, and he'll uh, he'll get this out on YouTube pretty quick. So thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next one.